Hey guys, Tyler at North 40 in Coeur d'Alene. Um, coming to you with a three-part video series on uh, one of the favorite hatches around in, in the North Idaho region, the Green Drake. So we're gonna do a three-part series. We'll do a Green Drake Nymph, uh, Green Drake Cripple, and also a Green Drake Adult that we're gonna do. But it's a fantastic hatch to, to remember. Um, if you're new to fly fishing, it's one of our major, major hatches in the spring, and it's an absolute hoot to hit. Um, they're great big bugs, easy to see, uh, and a lot of fun. The cutthroat love them, rainbows over on the Clark Fork. Um, most of our rivers around here have the hatch, so it's a good one to keep an eye on. So we'll get into it. Hey guys, Tyler at North 40 Fly Shop in Coeur d'Alene. Um, coming to you with our uh, last fly of our three-part series, the Green Drake. Um, this is the uh, Quigley Cripple Green Drake, and it, it's a fly that's been around for a long time, or style of fly that's been around a long time, but it is a fantastic pattern to fish during the green drake hatch. Um, there's times where you get the stillborn uh, nymphs coming up to the surface trying to emerge and hatch, and they get stuck in the surface film, and that's really what this represents. Um, so the back portion of this fly here has ostrich plume in it, which really kind of absorbs water, has a little bit of movement, and it's gonna hang down in the surface film, and then the, the hackled portion and the hair portion is gonna stand up, so it's gonna look like a, an emerging or maybe a stillborn mayfly, which is very vulnerable for the trout to eat during a hatch. So it's a killer fly. You can tie these in other styles, a PMD, bluing olive. I'm sure you guys have seen some of these. If not, uh, this is one you should for sure have in your box uh, for not only the green drake hatch, but other hatches as well. But um, uh, so material wise guys we're gonna for our hackle uh, we're uh, using a whiting bugger pack and this this is being tied on a larger size fly so I like these they're you know if you look through these packs they have some uh, smaller gauge tackle uh, or what I say is smaller but you know for like eights tens bigger size flies and they work perfect for that so we're gonna do an olive uh, grizzly and then just a standard white white and black grizzly um, and then there's a little bit of dubbing back behind the uh, the hair there and this is our uh, hair's ear ice dub in tan and then we're gonna do uh, deer hair you can use elk if you want um, sometimes elk's nice maybe a bleached elk where it's a little bit lighter and shows up in different light conditions but uh, we'll use this one here uh, just a standard um, nice straight deer hair and then we're going to use uh, an olive ostrich plume, brown ostrich plume. For the tail, we'll have a little bit of a marabou phyloplume, or kind of the stem of the marabou. So this isn't an olive. A little bit of wire. Brass wire, you can use uh, green if you want, or a different color, doesn't matter. Um, this just helps hold that uh, ostrich down, gives a little bit of flash, and it's also gonna help uh, hold down that back end a little bit down in the surface film, give a little bit of weight. It's not gonna, not gonna sink the fly, but it's gonna help get the fly to fish the way it's supposed to fish. And then I'm using a, a, a brown six aught uni thread. All right, let's get into it. All right guys, so uh, the hook we're gonna use here is a Dairiki, uh 270 size eight uh, in a straight eye. Um, you could use a straight shank hook if you want. I like this one, it has a little curvature too. It looks kind of cool. So let's tie in midway point here. We're gonna come down towards the bend. Then we're gonna do our tail material, the olive marabou. You don't need a whole lot there, just a short little tail. And then bring your thread back up. And we'll do our wire next. Make sure you tie your wire in nice and nice and good. Don't spare on the on the thread here because it is slippery and will pull out if you're not careful. 
If you notice, I'm tying down the whole shank length with the wire, not just right down here at the butt end. It's a good way for it to pull out. This, by doing this, by tying in at the, the midway portion here, it's gonna ensure that the wire won't pull out and we're not gonna create a lump back here. See some guys doing that and it doesn't always build a nice proportion body there. All right next is gonna be our, our ostrich plume. Try and pick out two nice long, long fibers and we're gonna pair them together. Like so. And we're gonna tie them in at the, at the butt end here. Bring your thread back up. And start wrapping. Has a really cool look to it. Tie that off. I'm going to go the same direction. Normally when I'm doing ribbing I go counterclockwise, but it's not going to make that big a deal here. I don't want to trap a lot of those fibers down and when you're counter ribbing this ostrich plume it tends to trap a lot of the fibers down. So get your wire tied in there. Again go in the same direction or clockwise as the ostrich plume. Tie the, tie the wire down. Next we're going to do our dubbing. We're going to have a little bit of dubbing back behind our hair. Bit much. Get scooted up. Just tying right over top of itself there. Make sure you coat the front portion here of your hook pretty good with some thread. If you leave that bare, your your hair is gonna want to tend to slip around on you. Again, when you're cleaning or get prepping your hair here, make sure you pull out of your all your under fur. You get it nice and clean. Go ahead and stack your hair. And our tips are going to be facing forward here, guys. So tips are going to hang out towards the front there a bit. Give it a couple nice soft wraps. And then we're gonna create a little segment there. That's where our hackle is gonna get tied in at. And then clip your butt ends here. Keep holding on to them during that process or the tie-in process. Makes it a lot easier to trim. Nice clean cut there. And what I do is I come up in front here. We're gonna get that hair to stand up a little bit. Stack, stack some thread in front. So, and then bring your thread back in the middle portion there. All right, now we're gonna tie our hackle in. Get two, again, your, your, just your standard white grizzly and your olive grizzly, stack them together and get them to cut together and then trim off a small segment there to tie in with. Make sure you tie it in nice and good. Bring your, your hair back, and you stack a little bit more thread in there, and then go ahead and wrap. About done there. Go ahead and create a nice finished head there. Time off. A 
little bit of head cement. And that's it. So that's the green drake in the Quigley Cripple style. Again, a great one to have in your box and uh, get ready for spring.